Good morning, Earth Science. Um, so this week, as we pointed out, is going to be about Earth's motions. So there's two main parts of this week, talking about the seasons and then also how Earth moves in terms of rotating on its axis and revolving around a fixed point, which would be our sun um, in space. So a few big vocab words. First is rotation, and that's when an object spins on its axis. So uh, that's the Earth actually rotating or spinning uh, once per day. If we look at the log rotating or this ice skater as she spins, um, that is rotation, meaning she's spinning on her own axis. She's not actually rotating or as we should say would be revolving around a fixed point. Okay, so if you're just standing up straight and you do a 360 or spin around once um, without actually running around a point or walking around a point, if you're just standing with your both of your feet together and you just slowly do a work all the way around one time, that's a rotation. That causes day and night. Um, the sun is not moving. And one piece of evidence is Foucault's pendulum, which is a weight that's hung from a fixed point. And usually we would just see this weight um, swing back and forth. So for example, if this is a top view, okay, this is a top view. And let's imagine that here's where that um, pendulum is fixed to the ceiling and it would swing back and forth. So let's just imagine you started it and it was just going north to south. I'm caught, my mouse is caught on something here. So this pendulum is just swinging back and forth, back and forth. Again, you're looking right down at it. However, because the earth is rotating, this pendulum starts to move throughout the course of the day. And that isn't because the pendulum is truly moving. It's because the earth beneath it is moving. And if that were to occur, what we would see is this pendulum would eventually end up making its way all the way around these circles. And I believe for these circles, um, it's just a representation of numbers for time. Um, I'm unsure in, in this case, but if you click for it for the video, it will really show you how... Uh, every moment of time it's slowly moving its way around the circle. Um, now it depends on the scale for the circle, but usually every hour of rotation it would move about a twelfth. Because if we think about an hour on a clock, it would move about a twelfth of that circle. Um, According to this, it would be 4.30. So if we look at it, this must be mil this is military time here. So 14 o'clock is 2, 3, 4, this would be 4.15, 4.30. So it's a little gauge of time uh, in Paris. Now, as we um, revolve and rotate on our axis, we get a year and we get a day. A mean solar day is the time from one noon to the next, and that is based on rotation. Okay, that is based on when we see a fixed point right here, and then the Earth makes one full rotation back to that fixed point. Now that is about 24 hours, and that's what we consider the mean solar day. However, the actual time it takes Earth from one point to go around is a little less than that. It's about 23 hours, 56 minutes. Now, that loss of a few minutes every day does not end up have, causing us to um, add a day. We add a day due to our uh, revolution around and because it takes us a little bit more than 365 days to uh, revolve around the sun. Because of that, every four years we get that leap year. And that's what we're going to talk about now, the revolution. So revolution is when we actually go around the sun. So if you think about it this way, revolution is how long it takes to go around the sun. It's the birthday. And the rotation is how long it takes for night and day or one 
rotation on its axis. Now one thing to notice as we are moving around the Sun, as we revolve around the Sun, if you notice the axis here, North and South Pole, is always tilted in the same direction. And that's very important. That's what provides us our seasons. So if we see here, we're always tilted in this case to the right of the screen. And because of that, if we notice in this one moment of time this season, the northern hemisphere up here is pointing towards the sun. That is why we have summer, because we get more intense sunlight. Now, six months later, as we continue this uh, revolution, I apologize for the messing up here. I keep hitting something on my desk that is causing my mouse to go a little haywire. Here's the equator. In this case, the southern hemisphere gets the majority of that intense sunlight. So this is our winter. And we'll touch base on that in the next video. Um, very important, both are counterclockwise. As we talked about at the beginning of the year, remember what I said, if you're ever asked a question where it's wondering if it's clockwise or counterclockwise, there are very few motions that are clockwise. Almost every motion is counterclockwise. Now, as we move around the sun, we actually do not move around it in a perfect circle. We move around it in an oval, which we call an eccentric circle. Um, it's called eccentricity, and it's a measure of how oval or circular a planet's orbit is. No planet has a perfect circle. Um, if you look here, the perihelion, we're actually closer to the sun, and this is actually when we're in the winter. We're actually closer to the sun in the winter. Um, the reason that it is winter is, again, because we are tilted away from the equator, which means the most direct sunlight hits the southern hemisphere, not the northern hemisphere. And for the aphelion, we're actually pointed, we're tilted towards the sun, and we are further away, which is weird. A lot of people think that up here with the perihelion, we're closer to the sun, we must have summer. That's not the case. It's all due to the tilt. And for the aphelion, we're tilted towards the sun. And that's when we're furthest away. And that's actually our summer. So it's a little picture of that. Um, and the last thing I wanted to touch base on before I break from this short video is that the Earth's axis is 23.5 degrees as it revolves around the sun. It is always 23.5 degrees despite our little procession or our little wobble that we have. Um, in every case, it remains through every season at 23.5 degrees. Um, just really quick, you can work your way through here. I don't want to make this video longer, but this these next two slides are just what I've talked about. Um, it's summer in July because we have more direct sunlight, and we have more direct sunlight because we have a greater angle of insulation. If we notice here, we're actually tilted towards the sun. Six months later, we're actually tilted away from the sun, so the most direct sunlight hits the southern hemisphere, and that's why it's winter for us. As I mentioned, the precession is a small wobble of Earth. We still remain on our tilt of 23.5 degrees, but sometimes, if you notice here, it's not exactly 25 or 23.5 degrees, but it is very close. Um, just a, a key here, there's a video that's really nice, but most importantly, in your reference table, guys, if you're ever confused with the difference between revolution and rotation, it's right here, and you can look at Earth, and you can go over, and you can say, okay, a revolution, 365.26 days. That must give us a year. That must be one movement around the sun. Okay, the Earth goes around the sun once. That must be a revolution. Rotation, rotating on its axis, 23.56. That must be the Earth itself on its axis, rotating one time, giving us day and night. Now, I will admit, even sometimes talking fast, revolution and rotation, they sound very similar. And many people just get them switched just 
because you're just speaking and they sound similar. So just pop onto your reference table and take a peek at it um, or try and adopt the idea you rotate on your axis. Okay, rotate on your axis. Um, I will start another one with Earth Seasons, okay? That is it for now, guys.